many patients ask me the same thing. <laughs> and my response is always that you don't need to be high, that there are ways around it. So 95% of the people that I help clear do a protocol of suppositories morning, suppository afternoon, oral dose at night, take it 45 minutes to an hour before you go to bed, you sleep through it. With suppositories, you don't get high. Wow. Uh, <laughs> how many I've actually helped, I have no idea. How many lives I've saved, 1,500 plus. In my experience, lung cancer. Lung cancer is the one that I've had the most success with. I think it's great, I think it's a great addition. When I was fighting for my life, that wasn't part of the protocol, I just did cannabis oil. But when I talk to patients about doing oil now, I always recommend that they do that combination as well. Everybody is different. Everybody's different. I've seen incredibly fast results and I've seen times where people have to just keep working at it and working at it. So we're all very individual. It depends on the person, not necessarily even the stage of cancer. You know, I, I mean, I had a guy with stage 3B lung cancer sent home to die, and we cleared him in, oh God, I think it was like two and a half months. Huge honking tumor in his lung, huge honking tumor gone. Yeah, so wow. it's very individual. I think CBD helps cancer patients. I can't tell you how many patients I've lost because they thought that CBD alone would do the trick, okay? You, you always you need CBD in combination with THC, okay? Uh, m many cases, things like breast cancer, one-to-one -one combination THC CBD taken apart uh, is good. CBD with brain tumors, same thing. But I always recommend taking them apart if it's in any, you know, significant dosage. Where CBD shines is post-traumatic stress disorder, seizures inflammatory conditions like uh, arthritis, etc. Yeah, see a lot, magnificent results. I have a lot of people who do a one-to-one -one ratio, not just cancer patients. In fact, if I get somebody like with fibromyalgia, uh, lupus, that sort of thing, one-to-one, -one. even MS patients, I, I always suggest starting at a one-to-one -one ratio. Here's what I say to people. In cases where people choose to do chemo and radiation, and do it in conjunction with cannabis oil, they come through it far, far better by a country mile. Not only in the severity of the side effects, but also in how effective the treatment is. Um, point in case, um, I have a family member who was diagnosed with Hodgkin's B-cell lymphoma. Initially, they thought it was early stages, asymptomatic, nothing to worry about. Three weeks later, they looked at him and said, you've got two weeks to live, your pelvis is full of tumors, you have a tumor around your carotid artery, one on your heart, one around your renal artery. We can do chemo. It's not going to get rid of the cancer, but we may be able to buy you some time and shrink those tumors a bit so that you're not in immediate danger of dying. But that's the best we can offer you. He started immediately doing oil along with um, the chemotherapy at the end of the treatment and he was on some very aggressive chemotherapy the oncologist looked at his blood work and said oh my god he said i've never seen this with somebody that's gone through such an aggressive chemo he said your blood work is perfect he said it's beyond perfect and then he picked up his scan results and he sat there and his jaw dropped and he looked at this family member of mine and said there is not one speck of cancer left completely gone it's hard to say what would happen. I mean, I mean, chemotherapy and radiation damage the body, and they, it, it's not just those initial effects of your hair falling out and throwing up. There's long-term side effects. It's the gift that keeps on giving. So the, if they've done chemo and radiation, they're already damaged. But it's such a personal choice. It's such a personal, personal choice. Definitely, I would stay on the cannabis oil, regardless you know, in hopes that you're going to repair some of that damage as well and protect the body from that point in. There's some studies just coming out very recently in the past couple of months on pancreatic cancer, which is a very, very aggressive, extremely aggressive cancer. And we've had our successes with it, but um, it's not one that we've had numerous successes with. And th there's been several articles f put out by reputable sources indicating that the best way to go with pancreatic cancer is chemo in conjunction.
with cannabis oil. So it's, again, individual. There can be several side effects. Uh, a lot of people get some paranoia. They get anxiety. You're going to get high. <laughs> and a lot of times in certain, you know, most cancers, we can use something called citicoline, which is a natural supplement, and it helps to bring down the anxiety and paranoia. You still feel high, but you just don't care. You can go to the phoenixtearsfoundation.com website, and you can find many uh, stories, many different research studies there. Or uh, you can go to our Facebook site, uh, Phoenix Tears Cannabis Oil Advice with Corey, Janet, and Jen. You just saw Corey. <laughs> Well, uh, as long as they go to one of the recreational states, they just have to be of age. You know, some states are 18, some are 21. And uh, as long as you can find a place to stay, you can get some medicine. Well, if they can, I'd say grow your own. And that way you know what you're getting. You, you can control it yourself. It's not that hard. You know, it looks scary, but it's really not. Just be careful. And it's, it's fairly easy to do. Or if you can take a trip to somewhere where it is legal, we, we do see a lot of people, I'm in Colorado, a lot come and visit us. So <laughs> you, you have options. It's, it's not hard to do. Uh, we used it a lot with cancer patients, a lot of, it's particularly brain cancer. Uh, you don't want it to shrink too fast because the wall of the brain gets weak. So you want to have the CB to make it go a little slower with breast cancers, particularly uh, the triple positive ones. It's very good to use the CBD. Uh, we've seen different studies where they use it one to one. We've seen studies where they use one to three times the CBD. So it is very helpful for that as well as many other conditions. I go for full spectrum. First of all, when it's an isolate, it tends to be, it is a pure crystal. However, you don't get all those other cannabinoids. There are 400 cannabinoids. When you get a full spectrum, you are getting all the other cannabinoids, a little bit of THC, which you always need. There's something called the entourage effect where they all bring each other in and work together in concert. For the most part, most breast cancers, THC is the way to go. For again, some of them where they have, uh, if they, particularly if they've done chemotherapy, we've seen that they have a harder to work with cancer, uh, you know, tumors in that. So it's better to use uh, CBD in there as well as the THC. Uh, oddly enough, children tolerate it very, very well. Uh, they, they don't have a lot of the side effects. They just take it and, you know, they feel better and they're, they're fine with it. I think a lot of that's in our minds that we say, oh, it's cannabis. Ooh. The kids don't, you don't get that. And uh, we had another child we work with. His name is Landon Riddle. And again, he had leukemia and uh, they forced him into chemo and radiation they they same with brave michaela and uh he went from he was they, it was starving him he looked like he was ready to pass and within i would say a month's time he was laughing he was eating he was doing so much better it was just great now he's cancer free he uh he actually does cbd himself <laughs> you know he he uh was on the cover of newsweek magazine we do have the Phoenix Tears Foundation and we have Phoenix Deer, Tears the company as well. So uh, I'm the director of the Phoenix Tears Foundation. I'm the CEO of Phoenix Tears. And uh, our goal really is to have it where the company funds the foundation, where we can reach out to more people, more countries, and really get this going and work on legalization, if not decriminalization, wherever we can. This is a human right. Everyone should be able to use this. Yes, uh, we have plans. We are actually uh, in touch with the royal family and the government. We're working together with them on tourism to bring people in from other countries who can't get this, as well as with the, the Thai people who are just a beautiful people. Absolutely trying to help in Vietnam. Uh, we're, we're, we have uh, studies that we might be able to do there. Again, that is with the government and we have contacts there and we want to try to make it legal for the Vietnamese people as soon as possible.